What is the spine of a story? I use the term uh, spine to describe what is actually the central conflict of the story. I kind of stole the word spine from William Goldman, who uses it a bit in his books. Uh, his books are more um, story, you know, just telling stories about the business, but he does use the term spine. I use it because uh, I liked it, and it, it accurately describes what the spine is, because it's just like an animal, a spine is a vertebrae, and the animal can't move and function without it, and that's the same function it has in a story. Everything emanates from the spine of the story, but the spine, the more accurate term, is a central conflict. It is the, the, the conflict which must be resolved before this story is over, and likewise, the second it is resolved, the story is over. Um, and it's absolutely essential, essential, that the screenwriter know what the spine of the story is before he or she begins writing, um, even before you begin structuring uh, the story in its three acts and so on. Uh, you can't do that unless you know what the story is about. It's about this central conflict. I used to use, when I was teaching as an example, Lawrence of Arabia, which is <clears throat> four hours long, one of the great films ever made. Four hours long, but the spine is uh, a young British officer in World War I goes to Arabia and tries to become a god. That's it. That's the spine. One sentence. You should be able to say your spine in one sentence. This is the central conflict. and that, This story cannot be resolved until that is resolved. What happens to a guy who tries to become a god? Uh, and when it is resolved, the story is over and the screenwriters wisely stop the story at that point, even though T.E. Lawrence went on and had another interesting life separate from that. Uh, this is the story they chose to tell. Um, when Laurence Olivier uh, um, shot Hamlet in 1948 as a film <clears throat> that he directed and started, uh, he started by saying, you see a tableau of characters on top of the castle Elsinore at night, and Olivier's voiceover says, this is the story of a man who could not make up his mind. Boom. Now that's Hamlet. Now, if you can boil Hamlet down to a sentence, you can absolutely do it with your story. And you have to do it. What is the central conflict of this story? What is it about? And if you can't say it in one sentence, it's already wrong. It means you're gonna, what you're gonna wind up doing when you try to structure it is you're gonna go off writing it yourself into corners, following uh, trails that lead nowhere, and then having to undo it, throw out those, oh, that's three weeks of work down the drain. Let's go back and try again, and then eventually, if you hang in there long enough, maybe you'll find the spine. That's a very sloppy and ineffective way to go about screenwriting. You want to figure that out uh, earlier in the process so that your story is structured to tell that spine, that central conflict. Uh, every scene in the story, every line in the story, every shot in the story in a properly structured screenplay is telling that central conflict. Not always directly, sometimes tangentially in Lawrence of Arabia, obviously. Not every single sentence is, is directly about that, but they're all about that, moving that central conflict forward. Uh, and that's how the screenwriters know, with this wealth of material, what is it we're, sh we're gonna shrink it down to the stuff that tells that central conflict. If I'm understanding correctly then, it sounds like when we talked about earlier in the video interview, uh, rules and by this page this has to happen and you were saying that some of that is just hooey or whatever, but it sounds like with the, the party pitch or the spine, that that's something people need to know. Oh, absolutely. Right off the bat almost. Uh, well, here's my, the distinction in my process, and again I call it organic screenwriting, <clears throat> is that once you have that spark, that er moment, that thing that seems exciting. Don't go, don't try and jump to a spine. Don't try and jump to uh, structuring your story yet. That's what the screenwriting books will tell you. Okay, now take this template we created for you and we're going to start filling it in. No. The next step in that process is to start imagining anything. Take that, follow that through wherever it might go. If you have a, here's a funny scene, write it down. Here's a character, write it down. Here's a snippet of dialogue, write it down. Just keep writing down anything that comes to you and following those roads. And what will happen, what happens in my head, and I think it probably is true of most professional writers, what happens is out of that free associating um, process of thinking of stuff, that, of where this story might go, you'll start to feel the spine coalesce. 
uh, beats will start to connect up. And <clears throat> somebody used this uh, analogy, and I thought it was a good one. Um, you're looking for stuff that uh, beats, little stuff you've thought of, that connects with the conjunctions so and but, but not the, connection, the conjunction and. So and but mean it's causality. This happened, so this happened. This happened, but this happened. But is a plot twist, so is probably not. But they're connected. Aristotle called it causality. They're, they're, uh, one thing, one scene drives into the next scene. If you're just connecting it with the word and, that could be anything, right? You can connect any two things with the word and, so that's probably not as helpful to you. Anyway, you start to feel this spine start to visualize to you, and it becomes clear that this is where your excitement lies. This is the direction, literally like a spine. It's like this is the direction the story seems to want to take. It's organic. It's where your interest lies, where your, where your interest takes you. Therefore, it's probably where the audience will be most interested. And then, uh, that's not the, the end of the process, but that is where you start to see it, and now you start to refine that into uh, a spine, a literally uh, one sentence that, that you are comfortable with saying, this is the story I wish to tell. This is the conflict I'm gonna, and then you do write that down. You write that down, stick it on your computer, because you, you don't ever wanna get away from that spine. You gotta stay on it, or the audience will start to fidget and squirm, and on top of that, your writing process will be miserable, because if you get away from your spine, you're gonna write a bunch of scenes that you're never gonna use. Um, and that's, that's, the, that's the steps uh, that I use, and I advise other people to do it. Again, as a working writer, I can't afford to spend months writing pages that are never gonna be seen by anybody. So, and it's not useful anyway, there's no reason for it. So yeah, the finding the spine, identifying the spine, writing down the spine, especially with a screenplay, uh, is absolutely critical. As a writer for hire, do you always find that spark? Is that ember always there? Weirdly, yes. Uh, because uh, even when I'm writing something that's, uh, as I often do, a children's story, uh, I go back to my childhood, I go back to my children's childhoods, and I find something that triggers a, a memory that's, in, that's worthy of the, of the audience's time spent following this little conflict. Now, with a children's show, it's often 11 minutes, sometimes 22 minutes, uh, so it doesn't need to be as big as uh, Lawrence of Arabia. But uh, it's still something that has some resonance, some power, uh, we had a conversation in the show I, I consult on at Disney, um, a children's show, and somebody was writing a story where one of the characters um, lost their favorite toy, and we had a conversation, well, is that enough to hold up an 11-minute story? You lose your favorite toy? And then we th all thought about it together. We said, you know what? When you're a kid, you're five years old, you lost your favorite toy, that's life and death, man. That is absolutely a powerful enough uh, thing to hold up a story. For at least for 11 minutes, and uh, and we could all identify with it and remember that and, and feel passionate about it. Now, it isn't always something that's important. Sometimes it's uh, just something kind of silly, and sometimes if, it's, if the show, and sometimes I do write shows that are just kind of goofy, then I'm looking for a different kind of inspiration. It may not be dramatic, uh, in, the, in the tragic in that sense. It was maybe just more goofy and funny and weird, but that too is a form of inspiration. But I, I don't have any problem doing it. Um, I can't think of any shows that I've ever, ever written on where I felt absolutely nothing when I was writing. And I think if I had ever experienced that, I would have just quit. I would have said, okay, I'm not doing this. You can always find something that's kind of fun and goofy and inspirational, and exciting uh, about a given story. And uh, that's, that's the task, that's part of the job. <clears throat> and I, I enjoy that part of the job. What if a writer cannot boil their story down to one sentence? My advice is, and I have given this advice to many of my uh, students and private clients, stop. Stop right there. Uh, if you can't do it, it means you're not focused on, uh, you haven't identified the central conflict. Uh, that's why I like using spine or central conflict as opposed to, say, logline or premise, which are the probably more common terms, but when you say logline or premise, that conjures up more of an image of, of uh, you're trying to boil down the plot. 
I don't care about the plot yet. The plot is not <laughs> what's important. The plot is merely a device that we use to tell the story, the story being the emotional through line of the story. That's the part that the audience engages with. Well, if you can't do it, then the audience is probably not going to get engaged either. There's no reason to expect them to. And the reason why people have trouble boiling it down is because of that, because they're trying to put the plot in the, in the one sentence. Doesn't matter what the plot is. Uh, it, it's, it's what is the emotional conflict, the through line that's going to hold up this story. Uh, I, I, one of my favorite movies of the past 20 years, 15, whatever it's been, is Michael Clayton, which is a beautifully written screenplay by Tony Gilroy. And Michael Clayton goes through all kinds of things. I mean, there's, he's in debt to the mob and his, he's a bad marriage and his brother hates him and he's, uh, he's a compulsive gambler, just one thing after another. But the, that's not the spine of the story. That's not the central conflict of the story. The central conflict of the story is some version of this. Uh, Michael Clayton is a, a sleazy attorney, corporate attorney, who has to, discover, has to decide how immoral is he willing to be when he has a client who starts killing people. That's the central conflict. And the, the central conflict is ended at the climax of the story when he's confronted the, uh, the villainous uh, 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 executive and she recorded her confessing to the murder in accidentally, unwittingly rather, and he's recorded it for the cops, which means he's gonna lose a lot of money and probably be in trouble with a lot of people. But he's done it because he, that's as far as he'll go. He, that's, that's where he drew the line. And the character, one of the, the big corporate person says, who are you? And he says, I'm Shiva, the god of death, which is a callback to an earlier line, but it just means that's it. That's where I draw the line. Story's over. And the movie ends within 20 seconds of that, 30 seconds of that. The conflict is over. You never do figure out the, you know, the rest of his problems are still there, but it doesn't matter. The central conflict has been resolved. So if you're having trouble boiling it down to one sentence, it's usually because you haven't figured out what the central conflict is. What is the emotional through line of this story? You're trying to put plot in there, which is not relevant.